guys. Welcome. This is a general reading for the Collective of Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Welcome, Cross Watchers. And hey, if you're brand new to the channel, happy you landed here. Come into the comments. Let me know where you're tuning in from. I always come back later on in the evening and say hi. And um, yeah, that's my jam. I kind of hang out here, put my feet up and uh, upload the comments and reply. That's what I love to do, to engage with you. So I'm going to pull from Gateway of Light Activation. This series of readings has been dedicated to Lion's Gate Portal. Um, so we're still kind of, you know, the, the energies are trailing off a little bit, but that's okay. We're still um, working with Leo season for a little while longer. Here we go for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Cross Watchers too. Here we go. You saw me shuffle. This card came out for Capricorn. It also came out earlier in this series of readings for Taurus. So there's the message here. Higher heart activation, dropping shields, divine love, your heart is healed. So, I'm, I'm, you know, it's what's in the collective. <laughs> so <laughs> we're all connected. It's your message is you have experienced much fear, separation, and heartache in your lifetime. This has encouraged you to close off and shield yourself from possible hurt. For a long time, you've been trying to open yourself back up, but have been concerned about being far too vulnerable. This card shows you have realized that love isn't something you have to work for or search for, but it's your divine inheritance. You have also recognized that this energy isn't something that comes through relationships or external experiences, but is your natural state of being. The more you close off, the more you close off from your true self. The more you drop your shields, the more love is revealed. The more you express the love you are, the more it is reflected back to you. Love is your truth super powerful and being that it's the third time two earth signs and now you um yeah we all need to hear this message and i was saying to capricorn yesterday that so many of us are you know kind of od'd on the whole self-love thing but it's so important and maybe this is a different way to lock back into the message of dropping our shields and tapping into divine love, our connection to the divine. And, you know, healing our heart is an inside job. Yeah. And love is our truth. So there you go. Oh, I know. And maybe I'm the one that needed to hear it most of all, because the third time's a charm. I'm like choking up. Oh. <clears throat> Okay, here we go. So I'm using my um, Twin Flame spread. It, I'll pull the whole spread. I'll walk you through all the cards, give you my general impression, kind of off the cuff, and then I'll go back through and use clarifiers for um, some nuanced details. So the first card is sort of your shared energy, something around some com communication, could be at 5D, could be you know, happening right now, but it's back and forth. It's back and forth. There's a lot of ideas. Some even when we see those little shoots on the branches, it's, you know, it's new, it's fresh. It's um, some things being explored that might be new. Where are you at? Where are they at? What's your karmic challenge? What's their karmic challenge? What are the opportunities? Yeah, I got to bust out. Um, and divine guidance there with the, with the Hierophant. So this, this first card for each of you, and, and the, it can always be reversed, okay? So if I'm saying you, 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 and you're sitting there as a cross watcher thinking, no, I'm the cross watcher, that's me, 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 it's fine, that's okay. Um, it's a re general reading, so, you know, it's not a personal reading. Um, right, this first card out is really sort of, where are you at with regard to this connection? And there might be some, 
something here that you're dealing with that you're either a little resistant to, defensive about, or that you're perceiving that in your person. But for your person, chariot is either full steam ahead, making progress, or they're at a standstill. We'll see with the clarifiers. Your karmic challenge is maybe you're, you're struggling with some manifestation or not feeling a sense of mastery you know, with regard to that. Um, so we'll look at that. And here with your person, their karmic challenge is about, you know, when the going gets tough, the tough get going and kind of pushing through and being, perse you know, uh, persevering against all odds. This person might struggle with some perseverance. And that may be why I'm picking up that the chariot might be stuck, might be blocked. And this is another blockage card. So to me, the opportunity is sort of a message of eight, eight of swords reverse like there's really nothing in the way other than what you tell yourself is in the way and the divine guidance is about not just the construct of committed conventional relationship but it's a more it's deeper it's deeper it's about our beliefs and um our sense of honor to our obligations and responsibilities to our word to another person to our sense of commitment, you know? And yes, it's about the, the haughtier level of that is the vows we make and take in a more formalized sense, marriage, all that stuff. But let's just take it down, you know, to brass tacks. You say you're gonna do a thing, you do a thing, right? Um, and so the Hierophant is sort of how we're indoctrinated along the way. You know, some people come into this world and they're raised that, no, your family comes first, that's it, no questions asked. And in other upbringings, you know, we're given a little more latitude. We get to make those choices for ourselves. And so our belief systems are, you know, there's kind of a broader perspective. And so belief structures can be different. And that's part of the relationship dynamic. So I'm just paying attention to this a little bit more because the divine guidance around that is talking about belief systems. And the Eight of Swords is when our limited beliefs hold us hostage. We become held hostage in a prison of our own making due to limiting beliefs. Let's see where it takes us, okay? Eight of Wands. Two of Pentacles, Two of Swords, Decisions, Decisions, Nine of Cups. I am feeling a little bit of um, complacency. The Nine of Cups underneath is kind of like, I think things are good. And maybe in the, in the communication, um, we've got some indecision, but we're reaching a crossroads moment. And maybe the two of swords is also, we're at cross purposes. We are not seeing things the same way. Our belief systems and structures are different. And so, you know, with that communication, there might be some, some energies where we're both kind of settling into some complacency. Like, I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to push too hard. I don't want things to blow up, um, but I'm not in agreement here. We're, we're at a little bit of cross purposes because we're leading with communication. So somewhere along the way, I'm probably talking to those of you who are in communication with your person. And so we're on the fence, we're feeling a little torn, we're not seeing eye to eye, but nothing's changing. So your energy here, Seven of Wands, of course, remember, can always be reversed. Queen of Pentacles, Seven of Cups, Five of Wands, yes. There's definitely tension and it could be coming from an outside source. So I am sort of seeing this as some sort of um, a little bit of defensiveness, resistance, Queen of Pentacles, no, nope, this is the way it's gotta be for me. Um, Seven of Cups, it's options, it's also like emotional overwhelm, and underneath is the tension and the argumentativeness. 
a little bit of confusion and chaos all swirling about. And so what's, where, where do you stand with this? Is like, no, I'm firm, I'm firm. So I'm not, I'm not seeing any kind of, I'm just seeing like a, whoa, nope, this is, this is where I'm, I'm taking a stand on this. And this is my position. And underneath is where there's this tension um, and a little bit of emotional overwhelm. Could be a lot of emotional overwhelm, but it doesn't seem out of control at this point from, from this vantage point of the reading. For your person, we have the chariot. Ace of Cups, Devil. Judgment. Um, this person wants to definitely move forward, but there's some some energy here that feels like there's some in, uh, internal fear underneath is the search for forgiveness um redemption but the chariot is about victory the chariot is um triumph over something and so triumph may be over the fear maybe over um, something that has held this person back. And so now they're wanting the second chance, the redemption, the fruit, right? They see the love here. They're wanting this connection. And maybe they're seeking forgiveness for some kind of behavior that would have suggested um, that they were acting from the smallness of the ego. Because I'm, you know, I'm not seeing anything other than maybe disagreements, arguments, and where is that coming from? Rigidity, right? The devil is um, Capricorn ruled by, I mean, both these energies are associated, both these cards are associated with the sign of Capricorn. So Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, the great teacher, the Lord of Karma. And it's about, you know, you know what the rules are and it's very rigid and it could be very, you know, color inside the box and you know, color inside the lines and follow the rules. And it's very um, limiting. And that's, that's what I'm getting here. This could even be for those of you where there may be religious differences, cultural differences, um, and so that could be part of it. But whatever, this person on some level is really seeking some forgiveness or a second chance to kind of move past, move beyond, have triumph over this darker energy or whatever they feel um, they have been controlled by or they have been controlling about. Ooh. That, that just got my attention. Okay, so for you, your karmic challenge is the magician. Right? Because why would you need to be defensive, right, and resistant unless maybe some, there might, have, might be a control, uh, like a little bit of a controlling dynamic here for some of you. Magician um, in your in your um, karmic challenge. Page of Wands, Knight of Cups, Ten of Cups. You feel like you're not able to manifest this sort of you know happily ever after romantic this vision you've had of something very emotional, very like this person being very vulnerable, um, the offer of love, just something very blissful and easy and comfortable and the way you've always envisioned it and it's not happening. And I mean, the page of wands is included in all of that because the page of wands is the passionate part, really the, the excite, the newness of it all. 
So I feel like that's your karmic challenge is, is you've had, you've been setting these intentions. You've been working with that new moon or whatever, you know, however you um, work with intention setting and you're feeling like I'm not, it's, I'm not manifesting that I'm manifesting a whole lot of ish. Like it's just, I'm confused. I'm overwhelmed. I just, I'm getting more tension and argument and disagreeable energy and deeper in the weeds of confusion. Mm hmm. So there's something off here for you, for your person, their karmic challenge, nine of wands, the world card, hermit, the moon. So we know their karmic challenge has to do with perseverance or the lack thereof. Um, like, you know, this is someone that throws in the towel pretty easily, possibly. And there's Saturn again. The world card is Saturn. Um, closing out difficult cycles, learning the lessons so that the new beginning um, can can take place, but it's like this person doesn't understand themselves very well. There's not a lot of insight. And what happens is they throw in the towel and then they kind of um, retreat, uh, become a little unapproachable. Um, I'm not seeing the hermit in terms of um, a search for self-awareness, but I'm seeing the the uh, reclusiveness, right? The going off the grid, not being very approachable. So the lesson doesn't get learned and they just, they just kind of shrink back into fears and insecurities instead of working through, um, what is difficult and challenging. And as a result, you get a little defensive and right. You feel a need to, for self-protection and that's to you a statement that you're not able to manifest. Hmm. It's like a really weird, vicious cycle, isn't it? So let's see the opportunity with the Eight of Swords. Five of Cups, Knight of Wands, Eight of... Okay, so this is a cycle. It's a vicious cycle. I just said it. <laughs> now it's like showing up here. And there is some aspect of it that keep the reason why we've got this eight of swords the, is because it keeps happening. We keep having a sense of, you know, sorrow and sadness on your part, regrets on this person's part. And the Knight of Wands has a very in and out kind of flavor to it right acting on impulse in the moment not really thinking things all the way through or having any kind of you know um sense of where is this thing going what do we want it to look like it's just like i know what i want right now so i'm gonna go for that yeah that doesn't always work and and someone gets hurt and the other person feels badly about it and that nobody's talking about that part so the opportunity is to make that part of the conversation and instead of just you know, saying, well, uh, yeah, like things are good the way they are. No, they're not. <laughs> they're not. So the conversation kind of has to go in this direction of, well, if you always feel bad because you know that I've been hurt, well, maybe that's just the vicious cycle of it all that has to stop. And maybe we can liberate ourselves from that by having this conversation and kind of, you know, stop you know stop the juggling act and not be at cross purposes with each other and not just sort of say well i think things are good enough as they are because they're really not we're both suffering that's what i think i'm seeing and so the divine guidance comes in with the hierophant let's see what those details are
Well, the de uh, mm, whoever is in divine feminine energy, which uh, if you believe you are the divine feminine, and then this is more a message for you. The question you are going to need to ask this person that you're dealing with is what are your beliefs ar around this connection? Right? What are your beliefs around soulmates? Do you believe you choose a soulmate? Do you believe you're born a soulmate? Do you believe in none at all? Because it feels to me this is the uh, page of swords, which is, you know, the curiosity, the questioner, the seeking of truths. Um, the lovers is um, a card of choice. And the hierophant is that moment where we really care about being honorable and, and being coming from our higher selves. It is the high heart activation for sure. Dropping shields, healing hearts through choosing of our own free will to operate from good intention towards someone we really care about. That's it. It's not, it doesn't have to be about marriage. It has to be about honoring what we say we're gonna do, being where we say we're gonna be, having each other's backs, as a matter of free will, choosing it freely, feeling connected to somebody at the level of heart and soul. But I feel like it's being spearheaded by the divine feminine. So that is what I have for you, my dears. And um, surely it's designed to help you drop your seven of wands. It's designed to help this person release their need to control, release that devil so they don't have to keep seeking forgiveness. It's designed to help you trust your manifestation gifts that you have. It's designed to help this person push through when, the, when, it's, when things are tough and to not kind of, you know, let it all go and do a disappearing act. It's designed to get you both sprung from the prisons of your own making. It's designed for all of that. So that's what this reading is about. I'm going to take it to the extended and go a little deeper with our friend here uh, who's got some tendencies <laughs> towards shadow. Um, and so in that reading, uh, I'm going to help you see what their higher and lower vibration looks like. How can you identify it? What does it sound like? What does it act like? That's going to be really helpful along with a lot of other stuff. The links to that are below. I say plural because you have a couple different options for how to access extended readings. Now be sure you know what you're getting into. Um, and before I give you the astrology, if you have enjoyed this reading, if you've been watching me for a little while, if you have find, found the readings to be um, confirmational or validating in any way, shape or form, insightful, helpful, and you have not yet done so, please subscribe below. I do wait to the end for this reason because I wanna earn that subscription. And because I want you to know I'm trying to build trust here, but I am also trying to stay on this platform. This is my work. This is my job. I, I'm not doing it for shits and giggles. It's really my chosen vocation. Okay. It's my calling. So please help me stay here on YouTube. Subscribe if you haven't already. Okay. Thank you in advance for that. So let's do the astrology, shall we? I said already Queen of Pentacles is... Capricorn, Chariot, Cancerian energy. We've got Devil associated with Capricorn. Um, judgment is Pluto, which rules Scorpio. Down here, Magician, Mercury, rules Virgo and Gemini. Page of um, Wands, Aries Leo Sag. Knight of Cups is Pisces. The world, as I said, is Saturn, uh, Capricorn Aquarius. The Hermit is Virgo. The Moon is Cancer, um, Pisces, I'm sorry. Knight of Wands is Sagittarius. Our Hierophant is Taurus. Lovers is Gemini. 
Gemini, Libra, Aquarius in the Page of Swords. And we close out with the Empress. Uh, like, I just love her. That's Venus, Taurus, and Libra. I'm headed to the extended. I'll see, see you there in a second. Bye for now.